Joining us now is Herman Cain, once again on the Savage Nation. Mr. Cain, it's a real honor. Michael, you are a great friend, and I'm delighted to be with you. Well, you know, your honesty and your character is shining through for reasons that I don't have to, to spell out. You're a very busy man. You've gone into the international spotlight. Uh, you're not doing much radio anymore, and I understand that you personally told your staffers you wanted to come on to the Savage Nation. Is that true? That is absolutely true, and the reason is because you and your audience were so kind to me when I was on first. Uh, you didn't know that much about me. They didn't know that much about me, and I respect you as a patriot. I respect you as a professional, and I respect, respect you as a man of integrity, and I said, yes, I wanted to be on Michael's show uh, as soon as we could set it up. That's beautiful. So let me ask you a blockbuster question. Yes. If if you if someone else were chosen to run for the presidency, Mr. Kane, would you accept the VP slot? It depends upon who's asking and the conditions under which they would like for me to do it. First, I would want to know clearly uh, what my role would be. Secondly, mm. if we if we are ideologically and idea wise so far apart. I can't mm -hmm. do that because I believe mm -hmm. the vice president should be a spokesperson for the president. For example, uh, as an example, uh, Mitt Romney, with all due respect, he has a 59-point economic growth plan that's got all kind of stuff in it. I don't agree with that. So right mm -hmm. now, today, I could not be out there helping him promote his 59-point economic mm -hmm. growth jobs plan. I couldn't do that. I like him as a businessman. If he gets it, I am going to support him. But mm -hmm. I have to work with someone that I, I could compliment, not someone that wants to put me in a role that I would not want to do. That's interesting because, again, Herman Cain, going into the third person, answers as directly as possible, uh, given that we didn't rehearse this question. It's astounding no. to me what kind of... No, I mean, your answers are straight up. It's as though you and I are talking in a, in a restaurant... Over a pizza. I mean, over a pizza. I'm asking a real question. I'm getting a real answer instead of double talk and, and footwork. Okay, so let's go to the next question that came into my mind that I think is a very important one. Given your background in mathematics and computer science, which I continue to boast about to people, you know, to this day they don't know that you have a real degree in mathematics, a real degree in computer science, that, that you, Herman Cain, uh, worked as a, as a civilian employee of the Defense Department analyzing ballistics for the Defense Department, and when I read the the elite snot noses on some of these shows are laughing at you and saying you're not smart, you know what I say to them on this show? Right. How come he can do things like that if he's not so smart? Most of these people couldn't do what you did in the military, I mean, for the military. So having said that, which cabinet post, let's say you, you're, you're not picked for VP or president, God forbid, I wish you are, but let's say you're not, and someone says Herman Cain is so great, the people love him, we'd beg him to run a cabinet office for us. Which one do you think would fit for you? Defense Department. Yeah, I said swear, that. I said that to my audience an hour ago. <laughs> Mr. Cain, I swear to you, I said that. Look, and here's why, Michael. Here's why. I want to be in a position where I can make a difference, and I, and now, I would only accept it if the president asking me to do it would understand that one, I don't want the priority to be on cutting. I want it to be on investing. Two, I want to upgrade our, one of the things that I want to invest in is our ballistic missile defense capable Aegis warships, and I mm. want to double that fleet. Why? The world is not safer. And so I want to build our military, not tear it down, because the world is not safer. So that would be the one that I could be excited about to help the generals and the commanders on the ground to get what they need to do what they do best, and that is kick the you-know-what out of everybody in the world if something breaks out around in other countries <laughs> of the world. I felt that that would be... If you, you know, if in that position came around, that would be right. the number one selection, A, because of your mathematics background. Yes. And, and there's another reason. If I said it on the show, so I'll say it again, Mr. Kane. You probably didn't hear it. You were busy at another show or on a campaign right. trail. I said that if Mr. Kane walked amongst the troops as the Secretary of Defense, yes. they would get a tingle up their spine because they would love him. They would love this man, and he would inspire confidence in the troops. I mean, this is the reality. So let's go to the next question. The other night there was a disaster for Mr. Perry. He drew a blank, which was embarrassing. There's no point in making a joke of it. Right. Would you, elim would you eliminate any departments if you were president, and which would they be, if any? I wouldn't approach it that way. Uh, you know, he w he's trying to identify three departments. Here's how I would approach it. 
I would do a, an across-the-board cut of 10% of every agency, uh, except for defense. I would review that to see if we got the right priorities. Then each of my new cabinet heads, I would then ask them to find another 10% by doing a deep dive. You have to go into each department and find programs mm-hmm. that are outdated, obsolete, a conflict with some of our other programs. Now, once we do that, some departments may be totally gone. But I don't want to make that judgment without looking down in the belly of each one of these. But I do believe we're going to find at least a 20% cut in total in that first year because we're going to go at it the same way a businessman would go about cutting costs. So I would, <laughs> You know, I would, Herman, Herman Cain, you, you and I agree on I mean, our minds work in a very similar manner because I right. just before you came on the show, I read my 37-point manifesto, my own, from my own book. And yeah. in that book, I, I didn't call for cutting, eliminating any departments. I said, cut them all across the board because that's how a businessman yes. would approach it. Yes, that would be step one. Step two... Do a deep dive. That means that you've got to do the heavy lifting of saying, let's put every program on the table. What are the cost benefits of this program? Mm-hmm. If those cost benefits do not justify themselves, it is gone. That's how you go about doing that in business, and that's how we ought to be doing it in government. But you know what, Michael? One of the reasons that, you know, each year the Government Accounting Office puts together a report identifying waste, fraud, abuse, duplication, and all that kind of stuff. They send it to Congress, and nothing ever happens. Why? Because if they are not trying to protect their pet program, they are trying to protect the pet programs of their friends. But guess what? Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll be a president with no friends, so I'm not going to try to protect anything. Mm-hmm. I'm going to make. Let me. You know, I I ask my. I know your time is extremely short, Mr. Kane, and I have this question. A lot of people ask. I said, "What would you like to ask, Mr. Kane?" We had hundreds of people calling. The switchboards were jammed. One of the questions they all asked was about the UN. What would Herman Kane do with regard to the U.S. participation in the UN? I would. I would bring about an attitude adjustment with the United Nations. That means. We are not going to compromise our sovereignty under any circumstances. Secondly, I would challenge, I would make sure that the UN understood that because we are the biggest contributor to the existence of the UN, we are going to change some of the rules that they use, you know, in terms of some of their practices. For example, I will not sit by and allow a tip-squeak potentate dictator to come to this country and insult our president. I don't care who it is. That makes absolutely no sense. Mm-hmm. We, we should be respected as a nation, even at the United Nations. And so I believe that there's a way to do that. In fact, I have talked to some people who have mm-hmm. suggested how we can do that. We need an attitude adjustment with the United Nations. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say we want to get rid of it, but we need to have a change of attitude and, and change the way we deal with the United Nations. And I agree 100%, and I think that there could be a role for a U.N. if it was put in its yeah. place. And, and, well, and I think here comes the most important question, which is about jobs. Because people called and said, how would Herman Cain restore jobs in America? And we talked a bit about the exporting of jobs. We talked about Bill Clinton uh, sending factories, letting China buy entire manufacturing facilities and bringing them to China. My answer was rather simplistic, but Donald Trump was on the show and agreed with the same principle. I said impose a tariff on goods from China. Now, do you have a position on this issue at this time? Here's how I would bring jobs, keep jobs here. It starts with throwing out the current tax code because it is a mess. It works to our disadvantage. And this mm-hmm. is why I proposed my 999 plan. Now, let's look at the first nine. This is where we level the playing field between U.S. manufactured goods, Chinese manufactured goods, to some extent, by the following. You take your sales as a business in the United States, and you're able to deduct purchases that you made from other U.S. companies. You're able to deduct capital expenditures. In other words, no depreciation. It costs you a half million dollars to buy a new, a new, uh, uh, a, a new piece of equipment. You can deduct it. And mm-hmm. you can deduct net exports. In other words, you don't put embedded taxes into the cost of a car or a bicycle before you send it overseas. That makes our products much more competitive. We would mm. be the most business-friendly country on the planet, Michael. This mm. is how we deal with China, because then we'll be able to better compete against China and all of the other countries. As far as imposing tariffs, if we do my plan, 
we won't have to impose any special tariffs. Mm -hmm. Well, it's very interesting and very intriguing. Uh, the, the issue of jobs, of course, is most important to most voters, and I yeah. think the bread and butter issue is the one that will launch someone into the presidency or keep that individual from, from arriving there. And the yeah. jobs, 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 I mean, that's the number one issue. The unemployment is catastrophic right now, as you yeah. well know. I, I yeah. think it's related to all of the issues that you just mentioned. Is there any overall comment, Mr. Kane, that you, any concept, uh, that you would like to leave the Savage Nation audience with that, that would be significant in terms of your vision? A Herman Cain presidency would first restore pride in being part of the greatest, na greatest nation in the world. A hmm. Herman Cain presidency would put United back in the United States of America. <laughs> Herman, Herman Cain would not try and divide us based upon class warfare. I will not mm. divide us relative to race politics. I will unite us because it says United States of America. The other thing that Herman Cain will do, and I happen to believe that the power of my 999 plan is going to boost this economy because we are going to remove this veil of uncertainty off of, the, off of this economy so businesses can get excited about growing again. I'm about moving that shiny city on a hill that Reagan talked about back to the top of the hill where it belongs. And I will never be one to apologize for the greatness of this country. I have achieved my American dreams and then some. And I'm not doing this for me. I'm not doing this for the people who have already made it. I'm doing this for the children and the grandchildren. And I believe every word you just said. Every word you just said is coming uh, from you, uh, from, from the honesty of Herman Cain. And you're the only candidate that I know of who's even talked about restoring the pride of America. It's the number one issue that's not being talked about, which is the collapse of the, the heart of America because we've been beaten up so badly. And God in heaven, just the spirit, just lifting up the spirit would be enough to lift up the nation's e economics. I'm sure you're right about that, and that's because you're a man of God. And I don't want to interject God into politics, but I know it's a big part in your life, and that's how you've yeah. been able to withstand the, the fires that you've been put through recently. It is a big part, and the reason that I've been able to withstand those fires is because of my faith in God, my faith in myself, and my faith in this country. This is why I'm doing this, Michael, and i got to tell you, uh, the encouragement that I get from people as I travel around this country, the encouragement that I get uh, from the feedback that you get from your listeners, it basically says and reinforces every day the American people are sick and tired of politics as usual. That's why this businessman is appealing to them because I'm not a politician. And the American spirit, that same American spirit, Michael, that started, mm. that brought us through tough times, that same spirit has awakened here in this country. I don't care what you call it. Some people want to call it the Tea Party movement. I call it the citizen movement. And it is mm. bigger, deeper, and, and more impactful than anybody thinks. The, the political class in Washington, D.C. is having nightmares because Herman Cain is doing so <laughs> well. And that's because the American people have awakened and they are not going back to sleep. Oh, I agree with you. And I said on my show when you were here, Cain is able, and I thought that was a good catchy phrase. <laughs> and somebody, somebody's been running those ads on my website paying for them because it's a heck of a phrase and it's turning out to be true. One other note, uh, uh, Mr. Cain, despite what people are rumoring, I will not accept the chairmanship of the FCC when you're president. <laughs> well, would you be press secretary for a week? <laughs> I would be press secretary for you for one day only. That's the first day. That's only the first the first day of your office. I would only agree to it for one day. I could never take it for more than that. <laughs> I may take you up on that offer because between you and Boyce, I want you to shake them up and give them a new attitude adjustment. <laughs> oh, 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 would I shake up the press if they were ever in my room? <laughs> You know, Mr. Kane, you remember the comedian Jimmy Durante many, many years ago, yes, back in the 50s? Yes, I do. I'm going, to leave, I'm going to leave the listeners and you with one thought, because this one is great. Jimmy Durante said, you better be nice to all of them on the way up. Uh, you better be nice to all the people you meet on the way up, because you'll meet them all on the way down. <laughs> <laughs> He's so right. He was so right. Michael, as always, I've enjoyed it, my friend. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Good luck.